You asked for it, you got it. Today I'm going to show you all of my guitars. Over the last several months, maybe even longer than that, I've had several viewers comment that they want to see my guitar collection. So, uh, I figure that my channel has uh, seen some significant spikes in growth here over the last several months, and uh, my audience has grown. Thank you very much for that. So, you're asking for it, so I'm going to show them to you. I'm just going to grab one, off, grab them all off the wall one at a time. Some of them got some interesting stories behind them. Some of them don't. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to show you every every guitar that I own. All right, truth be told, this guitar actually isn't mine. This guitar actually belongs to my wife. This is just an Epiphone acoustic. Uh, nothing, nothing really spectacular about the, the guitar itself, but this was a gift to my wife's. This is a gift to my wife from her father many moons ago. So this, you know, this def, this has some sentimental family value to us, and that only makes sense to keep it in here with the rest of the instruments in the house. This is the lone bass that I own, and this is the, actually, come to think of it, this is the first uh, first bass that I ever bought. Uh, I bought it with the intention of, I was going to be playing bass in a cover band, and then that band I never actually ended up formulating into anything, and you know, meanwhile, I got, found myself with a brand new, new to me, bass rig that wasn't getting a lot of use. And some years later, I found myself playing bass in another band that they did get, get some use. But me being a diehard BC Rich guy, uh, really is what made me buy this thing. It, uh, you know, this is a NJ Series Eagle bass made in Japan from 78, 1978-1980-ish. Uh, the serial indicates 1980. You know, the serial number on these are kind of hard to understand. Some guys say these weren't even beginning to be made until 1980. Uh, I've never been able to verify one way or the other, to be honest, but, uh, but I absolutely love this bass. This thing plays as nice as any USA I've ever, ever played. Still got the original DiMarzio pickups. There is an active preamp that's been added to it. And of course, this is one of the neck through models, which makes it a little bit more highly sought after. But I love this bass and the way it plays and the way it sounds and everything about it. This is one that'll stay with me forever. This here is a BC Rich Dagger, which is BC Rich's foray into the semi-hollow body world. Uh, nothing too spectacular about this. This is the only semi-hollow body that I own, which, uh, you know, at the time, 15 years ago, or whenever it was I bought this thing, you know, that was a sound that I was looking for. And, you know, honestly, because the BC Rich, that's the reason why I hung on to it. And that was pretty much it. Nothing spe really spectacular about it. For the most part, I walked into a store, found it was a, on, it had a really good price on it, along with another BC Rich that I still have, and I bought it. BC Rich Draco V. I did a video on this one not too long ago. Uber pointy for the uber aggressive. BC Rich Joey Jordison signature warlock. This is the the higher end one. This isn't the one with the bolt on neck. This is the one with the neck through and the EMG pickups. Actually, believe it or not, my wife actually really, she saw this hanging, hanging on a wall in a shop one time and thought it was the coolest finish she'd ever seen. Not long after that, and you know, this one came across my path at a really good price and she told me, buy it. So, me being the good husband that I am, I listened to my wife. BC Rich Acrylic Series Warlock. Uh, this is another one that just happened across my path at a really, really good price when I happened to have the money in my pocket for it. And uh, when I bought it, the pick, you know, I, I did have to change the pickups in it because the stock pickups that came in it I absolutely hated. But, you know, so I swapped those out for Seymour Duncan uh, blackouts, active blackouts. Uh, this guitar is unique because despite its weight, which is probably upwards of 13, 14, 15 pounds, uh, the neck on it is probably the best playing neck that I have in this room. And I really, really like this guitar for that reason. So, but also because it's acrylic and it is what it is, I don't get to use it for YouTube stuff very often. But I did do a video on it recently, so check that out. And this is my BC Rich Special Edition Mockingbird. Uh, this is actually the guitar that I bought at the same time that I bought the dagger. 
And again, you know, nothing, nothing too spectacular about the story behind, behind how I got it. It was, I was in the right place at the right time. I happened to have money in my pocket and it was at a really, really good price and I bought them. So, and it's been with me ever since. This was actually my main guitar for a long time. Uh, I don't know about a long time, but for a couple of years anyway, in the band that I was playing in back at, back in, at that time. Uh, it's actually not built very well. <laughs> you know, that pot right there is crooked and uh, always has been. <laughs> and uh, the pickups that came in it real, you know, were the stock BC Rich BDSM pickups, which I did not care for. And they were the first things to go. And I swapped them out for a Seymour Duncan JB and a Jazz set, changed out the tuners to locking spurs L's and uh, it's a good sound and very very good playing guitar this is another one that I really like the neck on Why? but the bolt-on neck BC riches really aren't my favorites but being that it's a more inexpensive model especially for the money you know the amount of money that I didn't have at that time uh, it's me and this guitar have been through a lot together and my BC Ridge Mockingbird Special. I've used this one in a video or a time or two. Uh, this is my neck through, neck through Mockingbird. This one's actually got a shorter scale on it than the uh, the SE, the Evil Edge SE model. Uh, this is another one of those guitars I just that has just always spoken to me. I love the way it sounds, I love the way it plays. Um, I don't use it in my videos very often because it doesn't have the, there's not a tremolo on it and the short scale makes tuning stability a little bleh, wonky but uh but this is this is another guitar that has uh that i've been through a lot with and has played a, i've played a lot of shows with this guitar this is the most recent guitar that i bought this is an asm pro bought this one about believe it or not it's been almost two years since the last time i bought a guitar which is extremely unusual for me but uh Fell in love with the neck as soon as I got it, and this thing was was listed at a price that I couldn't refuse, and I took it home, and still have it. A lot of people see this one in the background of a few of my videos. I get asked about this guitar a lot. This is a 92 Epiphone Flying V made in Korea. Uh, you know, to kind of be honest, I don't know if, you, if that's original or not, but that little weird three-way switch and, you know, the Jimi Hendrix sticker, of course, isn't, but... Uh, I guess I just assumed it was always modified, but uh, I don't know. The, you know, now that I look at it, I'm wondering if that's not original to the guitar. I never really looked into it that much, but uh, I wish Epiphone would go back to manufacturing guitars in Korea because this thing's as nice as any USA Gibson V that I've played. I've used this guitar in quite a few videos. This is my 2001 Explorer that actually started out life as a, a uh, an antique white or alpine white rather whatever gibson's white color is uh, i think it's antique but uh, uh this guitar actually started out life as a white guitar and uh the previous owner before me actually had this thing painted in the red and yellow and orange uh airbrush looking scheme that uh the logo on the back says mirror image with a phone number that uh, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in on that and see if those folks get any business from it. But uh, I'm, I think they're actually a body shop that uh, <laughs> that refinished this guitar. So, but everything else on it's original. And you know, this has really kind of been my. It's hard for me to pick a number one, but this has been one of my main guitars for a number of years now. So I love this guitar and always have and always will. This is my 2016 Explorer. I've, I did a video on this. One of my first videos I did actually was on this guitar. Um, you know, it's a it's it's an Explorer, so it's an Explorer. I still it does still get used, and you know I play it pretty often. This is an Epiphone Les Paul Black Beauty. For, uh, this is made in 2005, and at the a time in my life when I thought that owning an actual Gibson guitar was going to be completely unattainable. Uh, the, this guitar sold brand new for $7.99, I believe, and I saved up my tax check and a whole bunch, you know, of, you know, any other dollar penny laying around that I could find from, 
you know, probably the previous August all the way around until February or so when I got my tax check back. And, uh, you know, this was my first Les Paul that I bought with it. And still have it. I still love this guitar. Uh, haven't changed out a thing on it. Original electronics, original hardware, everything everything on it is, is still the same. This is a fake Chinese version of the Gibson version of the one I just showed you. This is, you know, again, this is not authentic. This is, you know, this is what they call chips and these are made in China. These are not real. There's nothing special about it. A buddy of mine happened to, he was, he owned this thing and was playing it for a while and was enjoying it. And then, you know, as he often does with guitars, he got sick and burnt out on it uh, and knew it wasn't worth anything. So he just gave it to me and I still have it. So <laughs> uh, kept it in the family in case he ever comes back for it again one day. This is another one I get asked about a lot. Again, nothing fancy. This is another Gibson, fake Chinese made, non-authentic Gibson, but uh, does actually have authentic Seymour Duncan pickups in it that were added later. And despite the fact that it's not authentic, uh, this guitar actually plays and sounds really good. I've played <laughs> I've played a few gigs with this and. Uh, it, you know, on stage, you know, most people just looks like a beat up Les Paul custom, uh, and it is. It's just a beat up, fake Les Paul custom. <laughs> that if something ever happens to it, jokes on them because it's not worth anything. This is a 2000 faded Gibson SG Special, and you know these guitars are not uncommon. These things, you know, the guitar itself, these are everywhere. Uh, I changed out the pickups because it, it stock it comes with a pair of 490s which is a good sound to pick up for the neck but i hated it in the bridge and i figured as long as i'm swapping that one out i might as well try something different and so then it, so that's how this thing turned into a, uh, a dirty fingers reissue in the bridge and that's actually a burst bucker pro in the neck uh and uh, of course i also changed out the tuners to tulip tuners uh so the guitar itself is Nothing too, nothing special, nothing fancy. These are very common. They're all over the place. Uh, but this one is special to me because this was a gift from my mother for my 30th birthday. And she took me on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, uh, to, the, to uh, uh, the guitar store and basically told me to pick one out. And this is what I went home with. This is my very first Gibson. And uh, I will always cherish it to this day for that reason so i just did a video recently on this guitar and this is the one that I, this is uh that video is actually one that people were commenting on they wanted to see on my guitars so um here we go but this is a zach wild vertigo les paul this is a limited run that gibson did in 2012 i believe uh there's only like 300 of them this being number 81 uh this guitar sold brand new for 22.99 and they've actually increased in value pretty steadily since then. Uh, I've shown you my two cheapo fake Chinese made Gibsons. Well, there was actually another one that I had that was also a Les Paul, but this one was actually a kit guitar, one of those kit things that you buy off of eBay that was unfinished, but it had all, uh, all Amer Gibson American made hardware and electronics installed on it. And it was, a, you know, for not being an authentic Gibson, it was a really good sound Les Paul. And uh, a buddy of mine, had it uh you know he played it and loved it and you know absolutely fell in love with everything about that guitar he had this one that he didn't care for and wanted to trade me for it so uh i'm not an idiot and i can do the i can do math as well as any other guitar player and uh i am a huge zach wild fan and always have been the first time that i heard the solo to no more tears was you know i was i was hooked and i've been a zach wild fan ever since so when this guitar came my way, I couldn't say no. I'm not a telly guy, but I figured I ought to have one laying around. So this is an inexpensive uh, uh, Squire Standard Series Special Edition Telecaster. You know, actually pretty well made guitar for being an inexpensive guitar. That I swapped those out to no uh, the SC and Noiseless pickups. Those tuners have been changed to locking tuners, and you know that's my telly for when I need a telly tone. Beyond that, nothing too special about it. Similar thing with the Strat. 
Honestly, most of my strat tones come out of my Schecter blackjack these days with the coil tap engaged. Uh, this is just an act. This is an actual Squire vintage modified strat. You know that I got it again. I, I don't buy them if I don't get them at a really really good deal, <laughs> which is how this one came came into my life. So good guitar. I played a couple gigs with it, but again, nothing nothing spectacular with it. And this is my very, very first guitar that I bought in the fall of 1988. The, the very, very first guitar that, that I ever actually owned. This is something called a TSX 2000. Uh, it is actually made in Korea. And beyond that, and the serial, and you know, the, there's something resembling a sticker with a model number or something on the back of it. Uh, you know, it's actually got a really good neck on it, but beyond that, I have dug and dug and dug and searched all over the internet and I cannot find any information on this guitar whatsoever. So if you know anything about this brand, you know, <laughs> let me know because I, I've never been able to figure out anything about it, but not that I'll ever get rid of it. Like I said, this is my very first guitar. The, old, the pick guard and the pickups and the knobs actually all used to be the same color white when I first bought it and everything's all kind of yellow just because it's as old as it is. But, uh, it's cool to me. Not too many people still own their very first guitar. 30 years I've had this thing. You probably heard me singing the praises of Yamaha acoustics or instruments at some point. This is my favorite, very favorite acoustic. This is a Yamaha A1R. This is a Washburn KC40V. I got this guitar on a trade at Sam Ash one day. Just honestly, I had another cheap guitar that I wasn't doing anything with. And uh, I saw this one hanging up and it was the right price. and. So I made a trade for it. You know, Washburn's, Washburn's facility burnt to the ground in the 90s and all the records went with it when that happened. And uh, so there's not a whole lot of information on this on this guitar either. You know, it still, you know, still has the model number on, or on the uh, truss rod cover, but it's not the best sounding guitar in the world, but, uh, but it is a good playing guitar. If you follow my channel at all, you probably know this guitar. This is my Charvel Skatecaster SK1ST is the actual model number. The Desolation series, which I have no idea why they discontinued because they were selling very, very well. Uh, most likely because you get a lot of guitar for the money with this thing. You know, this thing is all neck through. Uh, actual neck through construction, actual EMGs. And uh, satin finished neck and locking tuners. And uh, I think that's actually... Uh, might even be a real maple top. Regardless, it uh, is a very good playing guitar. And uh, you know, when I need to d demo something with active pickups, this is almost always the one that I grab. So this is a 1987 Charvel Model 5 that I had to put a lot of work back into to put it back to stock. I actually traded a diesel 412 cabinet for this that kind of Part of me kind of wishes I had that cabinet back. Uh, but when I got it, it had a, I think it had super distortion in the neck and something else weird in the bridge. And, you know, I had to track down all the actual original electronics, uh, the original pickups and everything that went with this because you know, what made these guitars unique is I actually had an active EQ. So I had to get that. The, uh, the harness and all that kind of stuff and you know then pay somebody to rewire it and put it all back together and now it's uh, pretty much back to original specs give or take so as near as I can get it anyway model fives are cool too because that was one of the neck through ones you know this guitar this is the one that I use in 90% of my videos and the reason why is because it is very versatile those pickups are not too hot and not too moderate sounding they're right in the middle uh, they do they're very very versatile sounding pickups it also has coil taps on it so that I can use this guitar to demonstrate uh, both humbucker and single coil tones when I'm doing pedal and amp demos uh, and it is also a neck through construction which is my favorite uh, there's also a satin neck, and this uh, this particular model has the SLS neck profile on it, which is the really, really thin uh, Schecter profile, like uh, the same one they put on the Keith Marrow signatures and stuff like that. Uh, and it is a very, very awesome playing, sounding guitar. And, uh, you know, I never thought this thing was going to turn into my main guitar, you know, and but for, you know, for YouTube purposes anyway, 
this has become my number one player. This is a 1984 Kramer Focus that uh, I did swap out the pickup. That's a Duncan Distortion. The original I do still have because uh, I still have the original case with this guitar as well, and the original pickup is in the case. Uh, a buddy of mine actually had this sitting in his attic with an old beat up cheap PV amp that is, I've, that's long since turned into something else, but um, they've been sitting in his attic for a decade and a half or something at that point, and you know, he just gave them to me because he didn't have anything else to do with them. I didn't really know what I had at the time, and then later on I started learning a little bit more about old, the old Kramers in the 80s and found out that this is actually a pretty, you know, a pretty good quality guitar, and uh, I started spending a little bit more time with it. And, you know, it's a really, really, you know, like most of these 80s shred machines, it's a great playing, uh, great, great neck, you know, just a great playing, great feeling guitar. Uh, and the other unique thing about this, not only was it made in Japan, but that fretboard is actually legitimately Brazilian rosewood, which is extremely hard to find these days. So if you run across the, uh, an old Kramer Focus, chances are it's got a Brazilian rosewood neck. This is an Aria Pro 2 XL that I had that I bought brand new in 1992, I believe. Uh, I was about 91 or 92. I was I was about four, 13 or 14 years old, and this was this was my first shredder. And uh, you know my uh, again my parents bought this for me for my birthday that year, and you know I I showed you my very first guitar, the TSX 2000. You know, which is a uh, has sentimental value to me, but it, the the truth is, at the time, being a, you know, especially being a metal, you know, a metal kid, <laughs> uh, I hated the sound of that thing because it was a single core guitar. This thing, I fell in love with everything about it, and uh, I've been a humbucker guy ever since. This guitar, to be honest with you, nobody knows what this thing is. This is uh, we. <laughs> We've speculated it might be a Jackson employee guitar. It might just be a custom shop. Somebody mentioned it might be a Warrior. Somebody mentioned it might be uh, something called an MJ guitar. Uh, you know, nobody knows. It's a very unique guitar. What I do know is I, I got this from a friend of mine who bought it. You know, he bought it, uh, you know, he's a little bit older than me and he bought it right out of college, I think he said in 91. And what the people at the shop told him at the time that he bought it was it was custom built for somebody from 87 or 88. So we figured it's at least that old and judging by the aging of the hardware, we, uh, it, it makes sense. Also, that is a Kaler Spider Tremolo, which you would have found in that era. These pickups are actually Bartolini pickups, which you see a lot more commonly in basses nowadays. Bart passive Bartolini pickups, but with an active passive preamp. Um, which again is very unusual. Finished fretboard, um, you know, neck through. I mean, it's 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 a high quality guitar. However, as I'm just now noticing, the whammy bar is missing on it for some reason. But <clears throat> it is an extremely high output guitar, <laughs> and there is no clean tone. I don't care what you're playing through. There is no clean tone coming out of this thing whatsoever. It is very, very hot and very temperamental and uh, great for, you know, they plug it into a JCM 800 though and, you know, it'll set your hair on fire. <laughs> this is my 1985 USA Hamer Scarab, Scarab 2 to be specific. The Scarab 2 had two pickups and the Scarab 1s only had a single bridge humbucker. But um, this guitar is... Uh, is one of my favorites and I have lost track of how many viewers have seen this thing hanging up in the background or I've used it on a few videos and uh, it's inevitable that somebody's gonna try to buy it from me. It's not for sale. Uh, I've had, wow, I've, got, I've had this guitar about 10 years now and when I was working at the store once upon a time this guitar had just been bought in pretty much right before I started and had a price tag on it for $8.99 I believe and three months later, it hadn't sold. Uh, that three month mark was in January and I had just come off of a rockstar December. And 
decided and knew that I had a big commission check coming and I knew that I wanted to buy, buy myself something special and I'd been eyeballing this thing for a while. So I went back to the my GM's office and uh, kind of poked my head in the door. I heard he was dealing with a couple of things that day and I poked my head in the door and I said, what kind of mood are you in? He said, I've had better days, why? And I said, I'll come back. And he said, hold it, freeze. He said, get in here and tell me what's on your mind. <clears throat> so I kind of sheepishly you know, walked into his office and said, you know that that pink fuchsia colored hammer scarab that we got hanging up out there? And he said, yes, you could buy it at cost. Just get out of here, go. So I got a smoking deal on this guitar. <laughs> Turns out that you know another customer had come in literally minutes after I bought it, looking to buy it for himself, and uh, uh, I beat him to it. So still all original, has the original case. When I bought it, it didn't have a mark on it. Uh, the only thing that has happened to it, I had it sitting in a stand one time uh, in this room, and it was a guitar stand sitting right, sitting right over there, and I was digging out a battery or something for, I think it was a battery for another guitar, and the battery accidentally flew out of the package and banged into it right there. So now it, it, it earned its first battle scar, and it wasn't even at a show or on the road. This is my... Ibanez XPT 700 Xyphos guitar. Uh, I did a video on this guitar here fairly recently, uh, as well a guitar in the video and on the uh, uh, Demarzio deactivator pickups that are in it. This guitar came came my way via an inventory snafu, and it was it was a weird situation where it had been hanging up on a hook in the back for uh, of the store I was at for months and months and months and nobody could figure it out. And finally, the operations manager decided that, you know, it was, you know, there was no sense digging into it. You know, it's basically just gonna write it off. So, which is what happened to it because we couldn't identify it, how it came into our system in the first place. So just gonna write it off. And there was another associate who's also a good friend of mine that had been eyeballing it longer than I had. And he pulled it down off the wall, walked over to that, over to the other associate, and said, "I don't know what to do with this thing here." So he got a hold of it, took it home, and six months later came up to me and said, "You know that Zyphos that you really, really, we both had our eyes on." He said, "I never play it. It's just sitting at home collecting dust. If you still want it, I'll sell it to you." So we worked out a price that we both thought was fair, considering what he had paid for it. <laughs> And I took it home, and I still have it. <clears throat> Between this one, the Scarab, and the next guitar I'm going to show you, those are probably the three guitars that viewers try to uh, the, the viewers make offers and try to buy from me the most often. <laughs> I like this guitar because the first year these had these uh, had these oddball uh, chameleon finishes, I think they called them, and uh, makes it for a really really unique look, uh, particularly on stage. And you know, it's just a it's just a unique guitar. I've always always wanted a Jackson Warrior, actually, and this thing came my way. And it's not a Jackson Warrior, but it's I think it's pretty evident what this guitar was modeled after. There's the Dean 10,000 commemorative edition of the Dimebag Signature Razorback. Uh, at least I think that's a name of a guitar that's about that long. <laughs> I think I got it right, but. Uh, this, I think this is kind of a limited run. You don't see these around too much. And a lot of these old older dime signature Razorbacks are actually getting, you know, seem to be climbing in value for some reason. And uh, <laughs> uh, this one's got the diamond plate pick guard thing on it. And it's just a really, really awesome, wicked looking guitar that I've gotten. This is another one everybody keeps trying to buy from me. And no, it's not for sale. Before I had the Razorback, I had this guy, which is a Washburn, not a Dean, but a Washburn, Dime 332 model. And this was really one of the more inexpensive ones, uh, you know, with a bolt-on neck, and I upgraded the pickups and stuff in it, but uh, this was, I played this guitar a lot when I first got it, and uh, still pull it down, mess around with it every now and again, so, you know, nothing fancy, it's not not overly valuable or anything though the you know the dime bag collectors uh seem to take a liking to this one this is 
if you can see it, this is actually the one that says Dimebag Daryl. Not one, not one of the earlier ones that says Diamond Daryl, which are a little bit harder to find. I always kind of laugh whenever I pull this guitar down because this is, uh, uh, this is one. Of, this one is, means a lot to me because I've always been a diehard Kiss fan, and you know, as much as I've always, as much as I love Ace Frehley. Uh, you know, between those, you know, between Ace and Paul, Paul was actually the guy that I always liked because of his personality. This is a USA, actually a USA Washburn signature model of his. Uh, he since jumped ship from Washburn and went back to Ibanez, but uh, this is a PS2000 is what it is. Uh, and again, this is a USA model. They actually made a Korean import model that looks very, very similar to this one. But this is, uh, this is the real deal. And... Uh, all, all I will say about this one is when you work in a guitar store, you have access to some really, 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 really awesome deals every now and again that no, that the rest of the world doesn't uh, doesn't get to have. And this is this is one of those ones that walked in and uh, I, I was it never even it never did see the wall because I snatched it up before anybody had a chance to put a price tag on it. <laughs> and last but not least is this guy. This is my. This is a just a cheap silver tone acoustic. It actually does have a solid top in it, but uh, this is a cheap, inexpensive rather. We don't we don't sell cheap. We only sell inexpensive. Uh, signature silver tone acoustic, Paul Stanley signature. What they call what he called a dark star, and uh, you know it's a, for an inexpensive acoustic. It actually sounds pretty good, believe it or not, but. And uh, this is essentially this is my couch guitar. This sits on a stand out on uh, out, uh, next to my couch out in my loft. And uh, when I'm sitting there chilling out watching TV or doing nothing, this is easily within reach. And that's why this one lives out there. A lot of people make fun of me for owning this because it's, you know, again, it's just an inexpensive. <clears throat> this is just another way for Kiss to make, you know, to Kiss to sell merchandise, and make a bunch of money. And I'm aware of that, but I'm a diehard Kiss fan, and I don't care. And you know, I saw it hanging in a shop one day, and I had the money in my pocket, and I bought it. And that was close to 15 years ago now, and I still have it, and, and have had it ever since. So there it is. That is every guitar that I own, and this video took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, but again, several of you have asked me in the comments or uh, via emails or on Facebook or whatever it might be uh, to see all my guitars. So now you've seen them. And uh, you know, one thing about the guitar business is this, I'm actually in the longest stretch that I can think of in many, many years that I have not bought or sold a guitar. So uh, the time is coming and I'm, I'm actually saving up for a, uh, for a pretty expensive one at the moment. So I'm going to, there's, I'm going to make a purchase soon and add to my collection. But uh, at the moment, for right now, this is it. This is it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed getting to see them as much as I, I enjoy owning them. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video at all, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, I upload new videos to my channel every Wednesday and Saturday morning. And I, as this video indicates, I even try to accommodate requests from time to time when somebody wants me to do a video on something. You know, links, any and all applicable links uh, will be down in the description below. And last but not least, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of my guitar collection. Uh, if you like it or don't like it or, you know, just doesn't really matter what anybody thinks because they're mine and I love them. So, but that's why they're mine. <clears throat> we'll see you in the next video. You know what? There are tons of young people out there that want to get involved in music and do not have the means to do so. If you are watching this video, most likely you're a musician, and many experienced musicians have tons of broken and unwanted gear lying around that they're not doing anything with. Please visit my friends at Share the Music on Facebook at the link below and learn how you and your unwanted gear can help change somebody's life.